I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer for Gold Derby, and I'm joined today by Terilyn A. Shropshire, the editor of The Woman King. So Terilyn, um, you have been working with Gina Prince Bythewood, the movie's director, um, for more than 20 years now, and have talked about how one of the great things to have arisen out of your close relationship is that she brings you into the process rather early. So in the case of The Woman King specifically, how did that early involvement uh, in production shape your experience working on this movie? Yeah, it was really incredible. We were just literally finishing our, our film, The Old Guard, and we were sitting in the editing room and Gina said to me, I have our next film. And anytime a director says, I have our next film to, to an editor, it's always a great thing. And with Gina, especially because you know, she's when she chooses to do something, she's got something to say and you know, it's gonna be pretty special. So, you know, I have the benefit of being able to read uh, the script early because, um, you know, she brings me into that process. And even at that point, we start just kind of discussing everything about it. <clears throat> I'll give her my thoughts, um, you know, often about characters and scripts and questions. And and then as she starts to move through the journey of, of bringing on her other collaborators, her production designer, her, her, her costume people, her, her cinematographer, and she starts to kind of creating her version of her lookbook, as well as often she'll present a mood piece to the studio um, when she has to do a review in pre-production, um, I get the benefit of helping her gather that material and often put it to a, 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 you know, a video type of presentation. So it allows me as an editor to kind of get a sense of, of how the film is starting to layer itself, how the script is, is, is taking on its cinematic next layer. And, um, and it really helps inform the things that are important to her uh, the things that are um, are, are going to be, you know, I, we always say the divine is in the detail. Mm -hmm. So being able to kind of get a sense of the detail of all of it and what ultimately her intention is putting it onto the screen, I can ultimately look for those things um, as she begins to shoot and have conversations about what I'm seeing, what I'm not seeing, what I'd love to see um, within within the uh, the dailies. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit of uh, knowing someone for so long and having worked with them, right? You have that rapport and you're able to say, you know, you're able to say uh, if there's something you uh, would change or if if she needs another take. Uh, so I guess that's what that relationship, uh, 20 plus year relationship, then the benefit of that. Uh, yeah, I feel like my, my role on the film, you know, I'm fortunate enough for it to begin as early as the director sees the value in my mm -hmm. in my feedback. Mm -hmm. I feel like my role certainly during production is incredibly important. I mean, I think we often talk, uh, uh, you know, uh, with editors often about the post production process with the director, but mm -hmm. there's so much involved. And in even when they're shooting that that level of communication, being able to kind of talk to her before she's, you know, as she's creating her shot list and thinking about what she's going to shoot on any given day. I also try to do that equal homework where I'll go back and read the script and, and really have a sense of what is being shot um, so that, you know, often as an editor, you're, you're working and you'll get a call from the set and there'll be questions about something or being able to kind of often maybe give a friendly reminder of like where a character is in this moment, whether it's even continuity of a scar or, you know, something that, that is happening within the scene that will obviously relate to what proceeds and what follows it and being able to kind of have those conversations about even where is that character emotionally what has just happened because you know often on set they're they're moving so quickly and they're just often trying to get their day you know their day done and i think it helps to have a, a voice in in reminding um the director or the filmmakers like where are we what scene are you shooting and and you know where is this dropping into um, the overall story? And I and I just love having those kind of kind of conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, let's actually get right into the movie and start with the opening of it, um, the battle at Enemy Village, uh, which is so good because you know it's not just this exhilarating badass uh, fighting sequence, but it's also an introduction to these characters and to the Agogia as a group. I mean, you get to see how they fight individually, but also how they work as a group. So, um, how did you go about balancing, you know, the action with the exposition that we are already getting here in this scene? 
Yeah, it was really important in this first scene that we are able to get the audience imprinted on these characters. Um, often uh, the first scene is often the hardest one to do because I think the audience is still settling in. They're still kind of, um, you know, recognizing that actors are playing these roles. And, and it was very important that immediately that Viola Davis became Naniska in the audience's eyes. So I think from the moment that, and this was the first thing that Gina decided to shoot. So there was that, that challenge as well. But I think as a, from an editing standpoint, it was just really important that we could show who Naniska was and, and the fierceness of, of who she was as a warrior. She, uh, you know, she's a woman who has trained every single one of these warriors coming out of the grass. You know, it was important that people knew that she was the leader that and why she was the leader mm -hmm. um, and that you you saw this this fierce person and, and you didn't necessarily you know, know why they were fighting. I mean, that was the thing about the discovery of that scene was not to take the audience and, and lead them by the hand through it, but let them discover who these people were. Why are they fighting? Why, why are they in this village? What What is their mission? And so initially it was a little bit more, when we first built the scene, it was a little bit more at the beginning where you kind of knew why they were there. Mm -hmm. Whereas as we developed the the scene, we realized, it would be infinitely more interesting and people I think would kind of lean in a little bit more into the discovery of what is what is going on here and why why are these women fighting but at the same time it was really important to take each character that you were then going to take a journey with and show how how they were all working as a team but they each had their individual kind of fierceness you know from meeting Azogi from the first time to Amenza to to you know to Niska um it was important to kind of let the audience know that these these women were fierce and um, they they had a a um, mission, but each one, you know, we wanted to kind of give them their own, I don't know, uh, fighting style, their own purpose in in that in that scene. So yes, you had the the propulsiveness of the fight, but also giving you those moments of um, kind of being able to lock into each one and see who they were. And how they how they work together. Yeah, and to that point, I just there are so many shots in that opening scene that that really do that. I mean, I've mentioned this before, but um, Lashana Lynch's smirk um, at the beginning, or when Viola Davis has the machete uh, sort of rested on her shoulder, and uh, mm -hmm. her expressions just says so much about the character straight away. And I think it's just such a great way to open up this movie. It's exhilarating, and like I said, you already get to see how these women work with each other. And then, you know, like I told you off air, um, I watched the movie a third time last night, and what I really noticed is with how much reverence and admiration the movie, you know, after the intro after the opening sequence, then introduces the kingdom of Dahomey, um, its beauty, its nature, its population. I mean, there's so, so many shots of different people in, in quite a short span of time. So what was important to you and Gina when it came to introducing audiences to the kingdom? Yeah, I mean, a big part of the role uh, of an editor and the filmmakers are is the world building. Mm -hmm. And here we're building a world of, of Dahomey of 1823. Um, I mean, traditionally, the the often Africa, Africa can be portrayed, have been has been portrayed many ways um, in film. But for Gina, it was extremely important to show the beauty of the African people and of the civilization and that they had agency and they had um, commerce and they had, um, you know, connections with with each other and so um it, it was important to have a sense of regalness to this africa a beauty to it so um ultimately that from the entrance into the village for, from when now he comes in the village and, and you see the different people the children the women working the men working um the 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 the, the kind of the generational thing that's happening in the village um the color I mean, it was very important that Dahomey show the beauty and the color because then when you went to Ouida later and you're then getting a sense of the port city and the enslavement, the European influence, that that was definitely a different kind of feel and look. So um, the entrance into Dahomey, the entrance into the kingdom, the, the introduction of Gezo, the beauty mm -hmm. of the, the wives, that's also with the beauty of the warriors was something that was important to show and to really take those beautiful images that um, Polly Morgan had, had, had shot and, 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 and then Akeem's work. I mean, Akeem McKenzie's work. Mm. So as an editor, what I'm really trying to do is, is to find those moments where you, you can effortlessly and organically world build 
so that people can just be brought into this this environment. Um, I always equate it to Maui as kind of our eyes into, and, yes. and she kind of brings us also into the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like Alice, you know, in the looking glass or, you know, going down the rabbit hole or, or going into like a Hogwarts with Harry, you know, it's like this, Maui is kind of our hero who's bring us into the beauty of a world that she's never seen before. And, and hopefully the audience has never seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's definitely the surrogate for viewers. And, and I really like that we get to see the world through her eyes. You know, we get to see everything in the palace, the Agogia, the, they're, you know, they're training everything through her eyes. And I think that really, yeah, I really uh, love that. And the way that Home was just introduced. Um, and from here, um, I'm going to make a bit of a jump to the middle of the movie um, because I want to talk about the shark tooth reveal. Um, so the climactic yeah, yeah. exchange between uh, Naoi and Naniska in the pool, because it's really the crux of Naoi's story. And you also learn so much about the inner workings of Naniska. And um, the scene works as well as it does because of when it chooses to stay on an actor's face and when it chooses to like cut away to a reaction shot or to the flashback that we get to see in this scene. So talk about making those uh, decisions between staying on someone's face versus cutting away and, and how, you know, just the process of putting this scene together. Yeah, that was really an important scene because throughout the film, in many ways, the information that 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 Naoi is about to receive, as an audience, we have been kind of following Naniska's journey in this. And she's been kind of revealing to us the layer of, of from going from a fierce warrior who shows very little to really peeling back the vulnerability of who Naniska is. So now this is a moment where, you know, she is about to reveal something to our character Naoi um that in some ways we have had a hint you know we've been given those kind of um breadcrumbs along the way and so when it's finally that discussion and then they're there in the water and Gina specifically wanted that to happen in the bath they she wanted to have that sense of water and and revelation and birth and and all of that and so for me what was really important was that you, and you always have to kind of, I say, forget what you know as an editor. You know, you have to always be an audience to your film. So it was important to me in looking at the two performances from these two powerhouse actors that this was the time that now we needed to be able to slowly reveal um, and, and, and take in something that has been her deepest fear, which is that she's unloved and that she's unwanted. And so it was very important to balance her receipt of that information with um, with how Naniska and what Naniska was giving her and when and what she was hearing versus what Naniska was telling her, right? So part of that was balancing, you know, Naoi's performance. And, and of course, Tuso was so incredible in that scene in terms of slowly, mm -hmm. you could see her slowly processing. This is about me. Is this, you know, and, and I wanted to be able to stay on that. And and it's all it's always a tricky thing because often as an editor, it's not just about when you're cutting, but when you're not cutting and right. those moments and how long to stay in those moments. And I just try to feel, you know, you know, be that audience as to where did I want, who did I want to feel and, and, and how I wanted that information to be um, seen and heard from. And so ultimately that's how it began. And, and you know, as not, Naniska is starting to tell that story and then we're going back into the layer of that memory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was also about when to kind of go into that layer and when to pull out to kind of be back in that room. Um, it was it was a it was a challenging scene, but it was a really fulfilling scene to kind of do it. it, it it's that that ability to just um, remind yourself as an editor that, you know, you are always the audience to the film and to the story. And um, often people ask me, well, you know, how do you decide you know, who you're cutting to and away from? And it's really about what where I want to be, where I feel instinctively I want to be as an audience. And I hope mm -hmm. that the that the, the rest of my uh, audience wants to be there with with us. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it, it's such an incredible scene. And you were talking about how um, Tusu and Bedu, you can really see how she processes the information first before reacting to it. And then, you know, once she realizes you sort of, her, her, she sort of flinches her head back in terror and her eyes widen and you sort of see how she processes the information or not, how now we process the information. It's just uh, an incredible scene. 
And yeah, and for Nadeska, it's a release. I mean, Nadeska yes. is finally releasing something that she has been holding mm. for 19 years. Um, and that is equally important, which is why after now he leaves, you hold on Nadeska because she's finally in this process of release. Mm -hmm. And you have to honor that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that sort of carries out through the, throughout the, the rest of the movie. And, you know, we come off of this big emotion laden moment and then jump right into the um, battle preparation, the sequence in which, you know, there are like four different happenings uh, that are essentially woven together. I mean, the building of the termite mounds, um, the battle dance, Naniska's battle speech, and then uh, now we getting uh, ready separate uh, from the rest of the group. So walk me through the process of finding the right rhythm in this scene and ensuring that all these four elements really worked in concert with uh, one another. Yeah, this was definitely a place where I really dealt with the layers individually first. And in some ways, that's the way it was it was conceived, um, where you kind of saw the term my, my mound building. Then there was an entire choreography of, of the warrior dance, which we call the battle dance. Yeah. Um, there was ultimately the idea also of knowing that because Naui isn't a part of the dance, where is Naui? And, and you're beginning to see her kind of build herself in, as an individual warrior who now has kind of removed herself from, from the group and as she's processing her own truth, right? And then of course, mm -hmm. there's the typically what you would call the, um, you know, the, the, the general speech uh, rallying the troops for battle. And as we started to kind of create each one, um, we wanted to get a sense of this kind of um, impending battle and also allowing, again, the film to start to take on, a, you know, that 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 sense of that pressure mounting. And it was important. We, you know, we were concerned, you know, with termite mounts that the audience kind of understood what those were. And if they didn't, eventually they would understand what they were. Um, so ultimately, once each of these sections were built, then it became the 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 work of finding that that perfect montage and, and that that ability to kind of give each its due. Um, what I loved uh, about what we did was we, we built the turnout mounds and the battle dance together initially with Naui. Um, we had kept uh, Naniska's speech separate because we really wanted to honor the strength and power of Naniska in that moment of speech. But at a certain point, Gina and I had talked about, let's see what it feels like to maybe put it in. And then we kind of said, oh, we'll do that later. And then at a certain point, one of our producers, Kathy Shulman, came in and said, mm. um, so have you guys have you guys thought about, you know, bringing Nineska into it? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, when our, and so so then Gina was like, OK, Terry, go go to it. So I literally, yeah, I took that speech and I just started to kind of take those moments um, and I started to want to create a call and response so that the battle mm. dance, which is really what that's about, is, is preparing yourself and getting yourself amped up to you know for that conflict that in many ways what Naniska is saying within her speech um, their response to her is is the actual physicality of the dance itself so um, literally it was a very vertical kind of editing uh, where I had many layers of things happening at many times and Sheena and I went back and forth because we loved the battle dance and there was so much yeah. great greatness to it so we had to kind of find those moments where um, I would be I would be working on the dance and I'd, I'd put in a, a certain moment of whether it was a termite building or or, or Naniska and, and Gina would say oh but I love that part of the dance so then I'd have to slide it you know it's like a little bit of sliding things back and forth till we find the, the perfect alchemy for every single thing there mm -hmm. and then um, once we had G Gina's uh, you know okay on it we had to show it to our producer Viola Davis and it can be daunting at times when you you have a producer who's also an actor in the film but um and that's an incredibly powerful speech and when she saw the whole thing put together um she gave us our she gave us her blessing so we know we were good and it just turned out to be a great great um piece in the film and uh, i just love the way it just continues to build and build and build mm -hmm. until you get to, to that moment of quiet before yes. battle that yeah. kind of silence before the storm yeah, yeah, I was I was just going to mention because um, I think that's where Terrence Blanchard's score also kicks in because you know accompanies the entire sequence uh, so incredibly well. But then you know after Naniska says you know we are Dahomey, 
um, it sort of it, it gets very soft and and very smooth as they sort of leave the palace, and I just really, really, really love that moment. And it's the perfect build up uh, to the oil battle itself, which I briefly want to uh, talk about before we have to wrap things up, um, because the sequence I think is the one with the biggest scope in the movie. I would assume. I mean, it's quite long. It clocks in at around seven to eight minutes. Uh, it's big, and most importantly, it's character driven because at this point in the movie, these characters have already begun to embark on their individual journeys. You have the new recruits, you know, fighting their first battle, you have Naniska looking for Oba, um, and, and so on. So how did you uh, make sure to maintain the tension throughout this uh, very big sequence and also ensure that at the same time it was driven by character? Yeah, well, it, it was a, it, that was a scene where there was so many cameras, so much footage coming out, <laughs> first, second unit, splinter unit, and it was all just like, whoo. Um, but what I found was, it's exactly what you said, is because we knew it was going to be, it, it is a character-driven type of um, conflict, and all of these things were coming, you know, together at once, what I really started with was the character. Um, I, 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 you know, often when I'm doing that, these kinds of scenes, you know, you can always begin in many different ways. You can begin with a scope of it. You can begin with a through line of creating the arc of the fight, you know, who's winning, when, when does the fight turn, those types of things. But knowing that that all has to be there, ultimately, what I really started with, with this particular fight, were each individual characters. And I remember, and it's almost like going back and looking at someone like a Fumbe, who we meet, who is one of the recruits who says at the top of the film, I'm not a warrior. Mm -hmm. So when I, when her footage started to come in, in terms of her, her part of the, of the Oyo battle, I, I really wanted to focus on showing that this woman who is a reluctant warrior has become a true warrior. So building her part of the act, that action part of the Oyo scene was just being able to kind of start in a very minutia kind of way. And, and show each character and almost create almost a vignette for each one of them as part of the battle. And so I found that in starting with the character and then building from that into the larger Oyo battle um, ensured that I knew that I would be able to kind of take the audience through each person and their journey through this battle. And that's really how I approached it. I mean, there was so much footage and, and but also, you know, within the footage, what Gina likes to do is she likes to keep the camera rolling if there's a particular choreographed oh, yeah. mo motion of the fight. And so it was important, uh, thank goodness for my amazing assistants who would kind of often also build. I mean, we had bins of, of each actor doing a particular chore piece of choreography of the fight. Um, and because they had trained so hard, I really had the benefit of not necessarily having to cut around um, when, when stunt uh, doubles were necessary in very, very specific places, but to be able to kind of um, just literally watch a particular choreo uh, piece of choreo choreographed fight over and over again, find those moments, but also find the emotional moments because mm -hmm. these actors were just so completely into it. Their, you know, their facial expressions, um, you know, the, those moments where you could see them so focused on the fight itself. I mean, they just put in such incredible performances and I found that if I could start in that intimate, because we always talk about intimately epic mm -hmm. and taking those intimate moments, those, those moves, and then build from that, I knew that ultimately you would get all of it. You would get the scope, you would get the, the story of the fight itself, but you'd also see the victories and the losses of the people that we cared about within mm -hmm. the fight. Absolutely, and I do think it absolutely is intimately epic. Um, that's the perfect term. Um, yeah. I, I fear we're out of time, um, but uh, thank you so, so much uh, for joining me today, for uh, taking the time to speak to Gold Derby. It, it was a real pleasure. Um, congratulations on this movie again. Well, thank you very much. I, it's, it's a joy and, and I'm, I'm very lucky. I, I love this film. <laughs>